Hey guys, today I'm talking about the reactive strength index. It's something uh, that we're using to test our athletes. Uh, it gives me an idea, you know, at the beginning, it tells, gives me an idea of how prepared they are, you know, gives me an, an idea of like how good they can become. Um, in some instances, it can even give me an idea of possible injuries. So uh, let me go over it and I'll tell you um, more what I'm talking about. Um, first off, it's the reactive strength index. Is done in many ways. Uh, we've chosen to do it um, from a 45 centimeter box onto a jump mat. And, and what we can measure is we can measure ground contact time and we can measure height. So what you do is you take the height divided by the ground con contact time and it gives you an RSI number. And so here's a little chart where you see all of our athletes, um, at least the majority of them, being measured against one another. Um, the RSI score is shown in the line. Um, you'll see that the, the big peak, here's some interesting things, is that, um, I'm sorry, the grant, yeah, the RSI score is shown by the the, the, the big, uh, the line. You'll see the big peak. And you will see that uh, Joseph, who is one of our really good athletes, he's 10 years old, uh, not our top athlete, at least not yet, and but yet his RSI score was the one that stood out to me as the most, I guess, um, out there, I guess, you know, um, as an outlier. He, he stood out as an outlier is what I'm saying. So, But the thing was, is his ground contact time was like by far the least of everyone's. As you'll see, his ground contact time there was like hardly anything. Uh, it's the blue line uh, over Joseph. However, his height, the, the height of his jumps was, you know, was average. It was um, Ryan, which I, you know, I suspected him, him to have a high score, and Matt and Connor were the top three, um, which I somewhat expected. Um, Connor, he you know, was a brand new athlete, and I'm just now getting to know him. But uh, some things that you can consider from getting these scores is, is, is one, a ground contact time is going to show tendon stiffness, which is going to show your your athletes ability to it's going to show elasticity is what I'm trying to say and like elasticity is nothing but how coordinated the neuromuscular system is with the muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organ uh, that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, elasticity it's not, because that's something that is really not Voluntary, it's involuntary. So like if a tendon is tight, it's gonna give a really quick signal to the muscles to you know um, it's gonna it's gonna tighten and it's gonna cause the muscles to contract quickly. You know, if um you know if they're if the the t the tendons are loose and weak, that signal is going to go much slower. So um it's also, though, you know, going to be, could be a big determining factor of injury if it's off whack too much. So as you can see here, like Joseph has a very high, um, a very low ground contact time, which means he has tight tendons. However, his jump height is, is average. It's, um, I think it was average of 27. So it was probably, um, without doing the T-scores, dead on the average, you know, the mean of the entire team. Whereas Ryan's was, his ground contact time was low and his um, jump height was the highest. So that, uh, the height is going to show the strength, obviously. The ground contact time is going to show the neuromuscular system, the tendons, the muscle spindles, um, you know, basically the neuromuscular system at those joints that are being um, stressed. So something to think about. Um, if you have an athlete who has a big score like Joseph, however, you got a big difference between uh, ground contact time and jump height, you know, you might want to consider spending more time getting him strong. And if you go listen to Keith Barr, you'll see why, you know, um, by just doing some slow strength training, you can get those muscles a little bit more pliable um, and you can get those tendons a little bit um, looser uh, without a better word at the end where it's attached to the muscles. Obviously, the end of the tendon is attached to the bone. You want it to be strong and pliable and very tight and a solid matrix. Um, when, it's, when it's attaching to the muscle, maybe not so much. And so uh, in this chart, you, you know, you've got 
the RSL score is the little line, the the depth jump height is the orange, and the ground contact time is you know the blue the blue bars. And so here are the here are the scores in real time. So as you can see, um, Morgan to be one of the bigger guys has a very solid ground contact time. Depth jump height was um, definitely above the mean. Uh, Sean, solid ground con contact time, but his depth jump height was even, uh, was a little bit higher than Morgan. So, uh, as you can see, and then but what I want you to notice is what I was telling you earlier, you have Joseph, he had his ground contact time, the average of the three scores was only 0 0.2. That's super low. But his jump height was 27.5. So mean maybe slightly above. However, then there was Ryan, who was, his ground contact time was low, but not as low, not even nearly as low as Joseph's. But his height was the highest. So, you know, over time with more scores and more people, you know, if that, if Joseph and Ryan, you know, Joseph and Ryan, the outlier of a score, I would definitely have said that it appears that the RSL score is a big determining determinant of someone's ability to be a weightlifter. You know, um, Joseph can be really good, but, you know, when there's a big difference between the ground contact time and the depth of height, then, you know, there's more work needs to be done in getting him strong. So, all these guys are good. You know, they're team you got as far as team usa athletes you have obviously morgan sean dean ryan kaylee has a future harley has a future matt's been one joseph's been one uh connor is definitely has a future liz has a future um uh, jc is, is our power lifter on the team so um we'll see how that score relates to power lifting i'll know more when i have more power lifters uh, Kaziah is definitely has a future. Uh, Hannah is already one. Uh, Tank has a future. Riley has a future. Team, Ty, I mean, pretty much all these guys. Blaine is the newest one. So um, the good thing about these scores and these tests I'll be doing is they'll be done on athletes who are at very high levels. So you'll see if it relates to your high level of athletes. Thanks for joining. Hopefully this helped. Um, it's a simple score. Get a jump mat and you can do it. I just want to give you guys some examples of the actual test. Um, as you see, we have the jump mat. Um, there was a 0.41 and a 30 something. Um, here is a 0.41 and 31.8. Here's Ryan. Um, really with him, we probably should have moved the mat out just a little bit, um, but 35.5 and 0.4. And here's the final one we did. Um, we landed it pretty good. It was, um, 35.2.44. So this was after they worked out. I just wanted to show you guys. Shout out to our sponsors at Dynamic Fitness and Strength. Thanks for making the best equipment to help our athletes like Ryan here get super strong and just making the best possible equipment for our team. So will the RSI score determine who's going to be the best athlete or the best weightlifter? Um, it's definitely going to give you some good insight. That's what I know. Uh, the more I collect, the more I will know.